so I have been playing around with photogrammetry scans and with the raw data that it comes with it. So what I want you to do is go into the side effects website, the web page, and download this optional sample content. And what it's going to be is actually just a photogrammetry scan from reality capture, and there's going to be a heap file. And what I want to do is just go and drag it inside Houdini. Let's take a look at it. Gonna put it on error, but that's fine. As you can see we are getting this very nice scanned in Apple. You can see there's a couple of problems. There's are actually you can see there's a couple of missing pieces and the bottom of it. So but let's say I want to actually and actually you take a look at it how many polygons there are. There are actually ten million polygons, so this is way too much and let's process this Apple to create a good topology and after that Let's create our diffuse map and also the normal map. And how can we process this raw data that we come get from the photogrammetry scans? The first of all, I want to do is get only the things that I want. So select all of the apple. Can take a while because there's so many polygons. And then just press blast, delete. And in blast, just delete non selected, like that. Gonna take a while. You can see now we are guess we are only now we have our only the raw apple. You can see in the bottom it there's a little bit of problems with the no information. But what you can do is actually in Photoshop just paint in all of the, the details from this one. So that's not too bad if you really want to. Now what I want to do is actually send all of this apple to the ZBrush because in ZBrush there's lots of cool tools and it's super fast with the lots of polygons. So I'm just gonna put down a ZBrush export node and with the add-ons with the plugin for the ZBrush it's super fast and you can easily walk between the Houdini and ZBrush. Before we're gonna send this to ZBrush I actually want to change the scale of it because it's way too big for now. What I'm gonna do is just put down a box and in this box I'm going to move it up to the on top of the grid like that and now put down a mat size node we're gonna use this box as a bounding box for our match size. Just put it inside here and then use the scale to fit, uniform scale, like that. So we're now putting our box, our apple inside the box and it's way too, way bigger, better of the scale. Not way too big. And now all we have to do is, now let's export it to ZBrush. Go to ZBrush and send to ZBrush. In Houdini, once you have imported, you can take a look at our polypaint. If you press on this one, in a paintbrush, you see you have a little bit, maybe too many polygons. So if you take a look at it, it's basically 10 million. So what we can do is actually decimate. So in the Z plugin, there's an option for decimation master. The first thing we want to do is, let's say we want to keep our polypaint. Just press on the key polypaint and but before we can decimate, we have to pre-process it. So, whenever you have selected whatever subtool it is, just select it and just press on pre-process current. And it's going to take maybe like a minute or a little bit less. So, see you then. Now that we have pre-processed it, let's turn off polypaint. You can see we are still getting all this nice detail. But the thing is, there's a little too many polygons. So, we're 10 million. So, what you can do is, decimation is the particular process of reducing the polygon count without losing any details of it. And also this geo is pretty, is bad because you can see there's varying varying points of detail. You can see at some point there's very many much of detail, another one there's very little of it. So the estimation master really doesn't really like that. So what I like to do is for this model just maybe eighty five and they just decimate it. But usually when you get the scans that they're like Hundred million, you can easily go like only the ten percent of it, and still getting all the details. So, but for this model, you can see if, if we let's say we go to something like half of it, if we press on decimate, you can see we're getting little two lets of a details in here. I mean, it's still pretty good. It actually didn't really decimate. You can see in here we are again starting to lose the detail. And we are only at 6 million, so this model is not very good for decimation, but for this 
let's just use it we're still getting lots of detail and it's going to be fine for us so this is basically our new source if the, the previous one that we imported from Houdini that was the source that we got from the reality capture scans or whatever photogrammetry program we use now this is our new source that we are going to get our details from when we project it back to the back to our quadrified mesh now is create the low poly model and then subdivide it and then project back the detail so what I'm going to do is duplicate this apple first of all let's call it one of them so the first one is the original let's call it let's rename it decimate it so we know that this is our decimate and now this is going to be our low poly and for us to get our low poly what we can do there are a couple of ways you can do it make sure you select it so let's we don't anymore we don't need any color for it first thing before we before we remesh it let's polish it so we don't get all the sharp details that might not like our remesher so we're gonna think about it so now we smooth it out so there's many tricks you can do we could create a vdb from this mesh and then convert it to polygons and all like that but for this model maybe in other videos but for this we just want to smooth it and then go to remesher and put it to the something like maybe be 15k with adapt adaptive density and then just press remesh now let's take out our remesh now let's take a look at our remesh you see we have a couple of problems like in here it did not remesh very well so what i like to do is just just close the holes basically going to close all the holes that they, they created with the remesh and then just remesh again with the same with the same parameters every time we do it you can see it's going to clean up this you can see now it's clean it's basically now it's ready for us to use it you can just smooth it out in here and this is our low resolution mesh that we're going to start to we're going to start to project details with. but for before that what we need to get is actually uvs for this item so we're gonna create the uvs on our low resolution mesh and then with the projection since we all we can do is subdivide it the uvs are going to stay in the same place it's going to work out so for this we can use the uv master inside inside zbrush or we could export it to the houdini and use the auto uv node so for this let's just unwrap it in here you can see it's basically a one press button for it i just send this model to the houdini and let's take a look at what the UV is created zebra. You can see here have basically one big UV island. We could use these UVs or we could just put them auto UV inside Houdini. Let's take a look at what it gives us what kind of results it gives us here. See, these are totally fine, also would totally work. Now that we have our UVs and our low poly inside one sub tool, so first of all. Let's make sure they're both visible. Now we are ready to reproject our information on our quadrified mesh. So first of all, go to the low poly that we just created and then project, there's an option, project all. And make sure you have these pointed on because with the color you're actually going to reproject all the color information also. So vertex colors also. So you're basically going to clear out this mesh, get a nice quad topology that we can then scale whatever we need whatever detail we need so just make sure your bait they're both visible select the low poly and then just i usually don't do not change any of these basically for me it works with pretty good without changing anything so and then just say project all you can see if you isolate this one you can see we are already getting details from poly paint now all you do is control d let's just do it higher I actually had the I had subdivided before so just click higher so now just subdivide it control D and then just project all again and we are going to do this a couple of times 
instead of getting already more detail, so then just control D, subdivide it, and project all again. So we're now at 200, and let's just do it one more time. Control D, and project all. At these times, you really appreciate if you have lots of RAM in your PC and a good CPU. Yeah, but I'm gonna go along, just have to think about it like that. So we're basically now at 900,000, and you can barely see the difference between between these and this. So we basically got all of the details and all the poly paint information. From over 6 million to over less than a million poly mesh. So now what we have to do, let's clean up this model a bit. So first of all, let's isolate it. So you can press Shift D and D to go between the subdivision levels. First thing I want to do is actually clear out this one because there didn't have any information for us to work with. So what you can do is just go to maybe subdivision level. Well, let's go to the most highest one. Just take something like spray. Maybe a little. Maybe something a little bigger. I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe this is going to work. All we really have to do is just spray in some information for our mesh, so it doesn't look totally bad. Like that. So once we're gonna bake it out. There's going to be some information in it, so like that. You can also smooth it out and then just crumple it up like that. So this looks fine. Let's go on top. There are a couple of. I really haven't used ZBrush in quite a time, sadly. So basically, you just fill out the information that we're missing from our scan. So that's going to be good enough for now. And now that we have created our extra details for our mesh, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, note that if you even send it out here with multiple subdivisions, inside Houdini, well, you can see we can change the subdivisions. In, inside Houdini, it's actually going to send out the lowest resolution for our mesh. So what we want to do is basically duplicate this mesh and delete the lower subdivision because this is the mesh that we are going to actually, actually get the details from. So basically this is our new high resolution mesh so I'm going to just go duplicate and rename it I'm gonna, this is going to that we're gonna project on and then what I'm gonna do is another one that we're gonna actually project off so this is the what we're gonna project off and project on let's duplicate it again and let's rename it project on for this project on what we want to do is first of all we want to clear out this color we don't need only, only any poly paint so go to the color and there's a option for clear actually for color it's a it's a fill object and just take the color like a white and like that so th now this is our poly paint without any useful information for us to bake out and what I'll do is also delete the lower delete lower subdivisions and for us to capture actually this normal detail inside our normal map actually going to do is, is smooth out this mesh so go to the smooth the operation and just smooth it out like that so basically we are getting rid of this most of the normal information and we're gonna bake it out as a normal map from the our high resolution mesh so now let's make sure we have everything set up first of all let's delete the lower the resolution for our meshes both of them both of them that we're going to export like that and then just make sure only the visible are these two and press up here visible in Houdini let's put down a go the import node let's reload it and they should come in as a two objects you can see they're intersecting with each other cool thing about this you can put down a split node 
I basically split node is very simple node is going to basically split it down because with GoZ they actually we get our groups in that we get we have in GoZ as a sub tool so we go to the group you can see there's project on and off so whatever you want to pick I just put down a null nodes so that we know which one is which so this is going to be our high this this is going to basically it will, or let's say just just say it's our low but in reality just the same object only with smooth out features and now what we want to do is get this poly paint on our object so that is pretty simple let's just put down a labs mark maps baker and one thing to note is you go to our low you can see our uvs are basically one giant island that zbrush gave us so it's gonna work just fine and here this looks, looks pretty good actually and what's good about this is since we just subdivided it you can see that our islands are very square so basically our low poly mesh is exactly the same uv island boundaries as our high ones because it's just a subdivision you can you can see even where we subdivided it the island boundaries are very square so our high is going to go in high low in low and now all you have to do is press on bake for 2k textures well so what we want to get is our vertex colors and we want also the normal map transfer so that should be good enough and just put on render and it should actually go pretty quick you can see now it's done baking we're getting pretty good results for our bake now let's add a quick material but for that let's poly reduce this mesh so first of all let's go back to our low and put down a poly reduce Poly, let's put it to the polygon count and uh, let's say maybe I don't know 5000 5000 for this time let's take a look what kind of results we get so this should be fine and what's cool about this since you go back to our UV map you see it it should be mostly fine exactly in the same location but even if it isn't perfectly aligning it's still going to work with our baked out maps and now I just put down a quick material so let's get our texture maps so this would be in job render so this is our apple color map Let's take a look at our you can see there's this thing we can fix with a Photoshop but overall looks pretty good it looks like it baked out pretty well I'm happy with the result and now let's get our normal map in you see normal map also looks fine and of course we can now this could be like our base mesh and for the things that we didn't got, let's just quickly fix it, this part inside uh, Photoshop. So what I did, I just opened it, this texture map inside Photoshop, and you can see this part. All we have to do is just go to the, what is called, even patch tool, patch tool. Then just let's just select this part that's blurry, like that. Let's just drag it on top of it, this green part. We just want to drag it where there's some sort of information and it should do the blending on itself so like that this part well I think it's good enough like that control D to deselect you can see we have fixed up that little part if it really bothers you on top there seems like enough information it doesn't really need to be lots of information so for the other maps, I think I'm gonna make more videos. Write in the comments if you want to see content like this more. And see you next time, and take care.